That's the only reason why I'm not doing diet coaching anymore. A company that pays more money, right? Some people expect you to have certain credentials academically and fuck you, like I know this stuff. Um, I never lied, I never said that I was anything that I wasn't. Uh, how much time am I gonna spend like trying to get that money back? Like, I prioritized doing drugs and drinking and partying and kind of went down that route. Um, I decided to quit and it actually worked. I was addicted to cigarettes and I'm like, what's the point? Like, I'm just gonna fail again. Pain, this pain is because you smoke. This is because you smoke. Like, this is your consequence from smoking. I enjoyed sitting around and talking shit, and I enjoyed, you know, sitting around and having a cigarette, and I'm not really seeing any consequences yet. And I gained weight. Oh my gosh, I am fat. Like, this is my first time I felt totally out of control. There's gotta be something that I like. Fuck, I like gained 10 pounds. I didn't really realize the transformation that had happened until it had happened and that I would probably do a better job than these other coaches. Maybe what works for me doesn't work for everybody, you know, doesn't work for anybody else. And just to remember that there's different people with different mindsets and different amounts of money mean different things to different people. So that's why I don't do it anymore. All right, so today I want to, I'm gonna be talking about my, um, fitness journey and life as a diet coach and kind of what I was doing then and why I'm not doing it anymore and what I learned and all that kind of stuff. So first things first, I will say that the only reason why I'm not doing diet coaching anymore is because of the insurance my insurance business. I am 100% all in on this insurance business and it I didn't have time especially with kids to do both so my decision was to go with the better vehicle the the the, the comp you know the company that pays more money right so uh, and I don't want to say more challenging but yeah more just mentally stimulating. I get more mental stimulation from going, doing the insurance stuff than I did from the diet coach stuff. And not to say that diet, you can't, because going into diet coaching, um, you can get into hormones, you can get into all these like mechanisms of action of all these different hormones and stuff. And uh, there's only so much of that that I can do. One, because I don't have you know, I'm not like an RN or, you know, have like academic stuff. And I didn't want to go back. It's still kind of like medical. So, so people, you know, when you get into dietitian and all that sort of stuff, um, there's a point in which some people expect you to have certain credentials academically. And I didn't have any of those. So my, um, not that you can't do it without that, but I just felt like, if I continue down this road, I would want to get some more academic training under my belt and some more credentials under my belt academically to be like, fuck you, like I know this stuff. Um, even though I taught a lot of that to myself and I had a lot of practice with a lot of people and everybody, you know, I never lied. I never said that I was anything that I wasn't. Um, so I always felt good about the services I was providing and the advice I was providing. But anyway, at the end of it, you know, okay, what? I'm gonna go spend another $100,000 on this like degree of which like, how much time am I gonna spend like trying to get that money back? Like, it just didn't, it just didn't make sense. Um, it just didn't make sense compared to the insurance business and the fulfillment that I get from that. And um, so that's why I don't do it anymore. Um, kind of my fitness journey is that I have always been like, okay, athletically. I've always been in sports. I played soccer. I did gymnastics. Um, what else do I play? I did golf in high school. And then I prioritized doing drugs and drinking and partying and kind of went down that route. Um, 
until I was clean up my act when I was 18. So from about like 12 on and off, definitely by 14, I was full blown, like doing as much drugs and drinking as I possibly could. And then um, 16 was probably like 16, 18 was the worst of it probably. And then um, at the end of 18 is when I turned it around. I, I decided to quit and it actually worked. And I had quit plenty of times and uh, it didn't really work, but the 18, uh, it did work. And uh, from there, I was now, because of all that, I was addicted to cigarettes and I was smoking quite a bit. And um, then at about 26, 24 to 25, 26, somewhere in there, I decided to quit smoking. And I really tried, I probably from like about 24 to 26, I, I, pra I would call it practice quitting. So, because a lot of times, when you're dealing with quitting smoking cigarettes, you tell yourself like, what's the point? Like, I'm just gonna fail again. And so to kind of shut that part off of my brain, I called it practicing. So like, okay, I'm gonna practice quitting, you know. Um, and every time I would quit, I would learn like a new trick that helped me. So for example, one of the tricks that I learned, that I did, obviously I did, I had uh, lozenges, nicotine lozenges, and the gum. By the end of it, I had the gum, I had the lozenges, I had the patch, and I would also go on breaks. So one of the things as to why I missed cigarettes was because I felt like I was giving myself a break from work. So I'm like, well, that's stupid. Like, you can just go on a break. You can just go outside. So I'd like go outside, like my smoker friends, <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes just by myself and not have a, you know, not have a cigarette. Cause I said, if I cannot have a cigarette, if I can practice not having a cigarette when I go and I take a break outside, then that's one more rep under my belt that I can practice. So I kept learning all these things and I tried changing from my preferred cigarette to like a different cigarette. Um, and then I went to spirits what are those that like indian one i forget what it's called natural spirits is that what it's called i did those and then eventually i quit <clears throat> and one of the ways that i quit was i would run every day and as i would run and my my chest would hurt i would say this is i had a mantra i'd be like pain this pain is because you smoke this is because you smoke like this is your consequence from smoking like trying to build like a negative con like a negative connotation in my brain towards cigarettes because i knew i just enjoyed it so much like i enjoyed sitting around and talking shit and i enjoyed you know sitting around and having a cigarette and talking with my homies you know i enjoyed going out and being late and like even though i wasn't drinking anymore i would have coffee and Red Bulls and monsters and energy drinks and stay out late and you know just have a cigarette with that it just really was something that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed smoking and driving. I enjoyed all these things. So I had to build up negative associations and I had to build up reasons why I would quit because I was so young that it's like okay I'm not really seeing any consequences yet other than the money. So I had to like think of think of things that were and then really try to magnify <clears throat> the pain in those things. So for example, <clears throat> the money aspect, <clears throat> oh my gosh. At the time, cigarettes were, I think they were 250 when I started smoking. By the time I quit, I think they were about five bucks pack, now they're like 10. And so I would add it up and I would really like, okay, this is how much money, this is how much money it's costing you. And this is how many extra hours of work you'll have to work a year to make up this money and also driving to the, the drugstore late at night. You know, I really would make that painful for myself, like kind of beat myself up like, oh my gosh, you have to go to the liquor store now because if you wake up and you don't have the cigarette, but like waking up and not being able to smoke a cigarette, like right when you first thing when you get up with you have a cup of coffee is like torture. It's the worst. Um, and just having to have those late nights and drive and like 
ooh, and be in my pajamas and be uncomfortable. And like, I'd rather be at home or sleeping or watching in my TV, finishing my TV show, like feeling that enslavement, um, really making sure that I was conscious of that enslavement feeling to this thing, uh, to amplify the pain. I'm trying to think of what else I did to amplify that pain. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else right now, but I would amplify the pain. And eventually, you know, with all these things, so I had the patch, I had the gum, I had the lozenges, I was trying to run every day, I was uh, not smoking in my car, like, oh, I was drinking a cup. I still do it, but I don't drink soda anymore. I would drink soda out of a cup with a straw because like the straw is like a behavioral thing that like, like that's one of the addictions is it's not just addiction to the chemicals in the cigarette, it's addiction to the behavior like of taking the break and the, the hand to mouth, uh, drawing on the cigarette, and the social. So I had to fill in like all these gaps, right? And so by the end of it, I was, I had the patch, I had the gum, I had the lozenge, I had my cup with the straw, and I was eating and I, with, with soda, and I was, I think I was eating like hard candy or something, like sucking on candy, like Jolly Ranchers or something. And I gained weight, I gained like 20 pounds, and I, I remember not really realizing I was gaining weight, and then all of a sudden I was like, holy fuck, I've gained all this weight, and I had to go to, my class reunion i think it was my 10 year reunion so i must have been 28 at the time by the time i had gained this weight so i'd been a couple of years in of the quitting smoking i think and i go i remember looking at pictures and like oh my gosh i am fat like what the hell happened <laughs> like what did i how did like my cheeks like everything i was like I felt out of control because here I was like exercising. I was running a mile, I think. And it used to be when I was younger and not having soda and candy every day, um, that if I would run, I could drop whatever weight I needed to and kind of get back to where I wanted to be and then move on with my life. So it was never losing weight was never really an issue for me before. Um, and so this is my first time I felt totally out of control. So I felt out of control and I just remember thinking, shit, I am going to have to be one of those gym people because obviously this whole running thing just isn't enough for me. I don't know if it's because I'm old, because I'm old, all of 28, right? Uh, I don't know what it is, but I, you know, this next thing I chose to try was the gym. And so I went to the gym. I knew that if I spent any money on a membership at all, that I would actually go. So I signed up at 24 hour fitness and I noticed that they had classes. And to me, I thought, oh, a class, they're going to teach me like how to work out. And, um, I didn't realize it was just like facilitating a workout. Not really like, I mean, yeah, some of the teachers teach you stuff, but it's not like what I was picturing. I was picturing almost like a personal training session, um, type thing, but anyway so i decided that okay i'm gonna take every i don't know which thing i like i hate all of the i hate exercising so what i'm i'm sure there's something i must like and i knew that i would hate whatever i tried at first because i sucked out you know whatever you try you're gonna suck at it and if you suck at it you're gonna hate it because you feel like an idiot so i said okay i'm gonna try every class i'm gonna try at least 10 times by the time i do that there's gotta be something that i like right so I tried every class. I did Zumba. I did, you know, the old lady step class. I did spin. I did uh, body pump. I did all of the things, all of the classes. And I ended up really liking spin and Zumba and body pump. And so I was like, wow, I do like something. So I would go consistently. I think I went consistently for a year. And then after about a year, um, well, I remember after the first couple, and I, this is important for people out there that are going through some sort of a transformation. It's like, I remember the first couple of months I was going and I kept weighing myself and I was like, fuck, I like gained 10 pounds. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like I'm going all the time. Like what is wrong? And, um, not realizing that I was, it was probably, I was gaining muscle. And on top of that, your body holds on to water more when you're exercising. So probably a lot of it was like water weight 
and um, maybe I was eating a little bit more than I should have and I was probably gaining muscle. So I went back to the drawing board and I said, okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to weigh myself because that's discouraging me because I didn't want to, I knew if I kept doing it, like it would do something to my life. Like I, it was something I'd never done before. I was starting to like it. I was like, okay, I like this enough to where like what I look like isn't mattering as much to me. Um, and I know eventually it's going to come off. I, it's obviously not happening as fast as I want to. And I don't really know how long this takes because I've never really been through anything like this before. So I'm just going to enjoy it. And you know, I'll think about it later, you know? And so I was enjoying the classes and then I started thinking about, I enjoyed the classes so much that I wanted to be better in class. So I started thinking about, okay, what can I eat that makes me perform better? Cause I would notice like, oh, if I eat this, I don't do as good in class or I'm not as fast or like I can't jump as high or whatever the thing is. But if I eat this other way, then I feel good. And I was like noticing all that. Oh, if I don't sleep good, then I don't perform as good the next day. And like Sally beats me or whatever, you know, the old 65 year old ladies kicking my ass over here. I can't have that. I'm 28. I gotta, I gotta keep up with the 65 year olds at least. Uh, so I started doing that. And then, you know, I look up a year later and people are asking me like, are you competing? Like, what are you, like, how do you do it? What? And I'm going like, Oh wow, like, you know, starting to look at myself and go, I guess I have, I've lost a lot of weight. I guess my arms are kind of like cut now. I mean, I was a lot thinner back then. I just had a baby, but um, it was, it was just like, wow. Like I didn't really realize the transformation that had happened until it had happened. And so many people were asking me about competing that I didn't even know what they were talking about. I'm like, what is this competing thing? Like what, competing in what? Like what do you mean competing? Like, am I a professional athlete? Is that what they're asking me? So eventually somebody said, don't they mean like competing in physique or figure or bikini? I'm like, bikini? Like, what are you talking about? Bikini? Like, I had no idea about NPC or any of the bodybuilding. And like, I'd seen bodybuilding obviously on TV, but I didn't know like there was like girls that did it. Um, I didn't know there was bikini, <laughs> you know? I thought it was all like, ooh, you know? Um, so, um, so I didn't really know what any of that meant. I didn't know what competing was. And so I did some research and I really wanted to find someone that could teach me how to lift weights properly. So I did research, I found, and I wanted to do it with a female. Um, I remember trying to work out with this other bodybuilder girl, but there was all these emotional issues that came up for her and she couldn't do it. And then um, I found a female personal trainer who owned her own personal gym. And I hired her to help me just learn the basics of squatting and deadlifting and just how to be safe. Cause I just knew I didn't want to hurt myself. I didn't want to do it wrong. And so I then I competed after that and continued to work with a bunch of different coaches. And as I competed, I never hired a coach outside of somebody teaching me how to lift and like do good form. Um, I didn't have anybody, um, so I never hired anyone. I never um, bought a program because there were a lot of, at that time, I'm sure there are now still, uh, coaches and programs you can buy where you pay a monthly rate. And it was like $700 a month for like this, like the close, the program that was closest to my house. Um, and I felt like it was very cookie cutter and I'm like, I'm sure I can design something. I'm sure like, cause I had, at this point I had done nauseating amounts of research on the best diet for burning fat and building muscle. And I felt like I had a lot of that down and that I would probably do a better job than these other coaches. So I did it all. I did it all natural. I never took anything. And I, as a result, I figured out and researched, I didn't figure it out. I'm not like the first person to do this, but I had researched ways to cut water, reduce water retention and flush water from your body pre-contest and uh, without using a diuretic, without using a pill. And I was like, okay, I like this. So I would try it and I experimented on myself and I would take photos and I'd hire people to like to do photo shoots, um, and I would try different things. I would try different ways of cutting water and combine them and see what worked best for me. And then uh, 
different amounts of carbs to see like how full I wanted my muscles in on stage basically and like kind of what look I wanted. So I do that and um, I ended up winning my first show and then my in, and then eventually my second show. But in between all that, um, people were like asking me what I was doing. So anyway, I started coaching because I was like a walking billboard, right? Like I looked great. I was competing, um, doing bikini, which is like what most women want to look like. So, uh, and then also I had a friend who was a professional boxer and she wanted me to look at her diet. She said, Hey, I know you've done this all natural. And you know, obviously I have to be all natural because I'm like, I'm boxing professionally and then we get tested with, you know, all the water tests, you know, all the water restrictions and stuff. So I have to be within line with all this. And so, um, she gave me all the, um, information on that. So she gave me all the information on like, I wrote down like how often she's working out, what she's doing, how often she's training, how much she's running, when she's sparring. And we, I designed a plan around like her sparring, you know, her sparring sessions and basically like to optimize those. I mean, obviously she was optimized the rest of the week, but we were really like, okay, you've got to, we, that was the priority. And she did it and like, she liked it and she liked the, the meals that I had prepared. She was actually even like, she would call me, she'd be like, uh, you want me to eat like 10 ounces of sweet potatoes, right? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's what it says. That's that's that's, that's the plan. And like, I gave her like an, a, a recipe, I think, for like baked fries or something. And she had cut them up. And like, she's like, um, can I send a picture to you? Because that's like a lot of food. Like, this is a lot of food. And I was like, uh, yeah, you can send me a picture. But if you wait it out and it's 10 ounces, then that's what you're supposed to eat. If you think that's a lot of food, then yeah, I guess you're eating a lot of food. <laughs> and she was like, okay, I'm gonna send you a picture. She sent it to me, and I'm like. Yeah, that's like a serving for an athlete. Like you're running, like at this time, I think she was running like five, six miles a day. And, you know, she was overtraining with this, uh, not the coaches she has now, but with the, some of the previous coaches. I would, and then at some point I would end up telling her like, you gotta lift weights and you gotta do, you know, like kind of telling her different stuff. And so it's been fun to watch that friendship evolve over the years. Um, but, um, yeah, so she ended up working and then she, and then she was like, all right, uh, I think it's work. You know, she felt good. And then um, she started kind of like losing weight and stuff and and eating. And so she was like or maintaining her. I forget. Maybe she lost like a couple of pounds in like the first month, you know, and like maintain. She then felt good. And like she was like work. She was doing like performing better because she was actually eating. She's like, wow, this is amazing. Like, do you mind doing my like wins? And I was like yeah, sure. I'll try. I mean, just, just know I got the baby in here. Just uh, know that, um, you know, I've never really done it before. Like I, we can try like this water manipulation stuff, but, um, like we might want to try it. Like what I did is like, I tried it two weeks before my show. So maybe you should do that for your, uh, you know, we'll do it like before, your actual match. And so she'd be like, okay. So I think we did like one or two tests on her, like to see like water, you know, all that stuff and how like her weight would fluctuate and, um, it worked for her. And so I was like, cool, it worked for me. You know, it works for you. Like, you know, we know what like works for you. That's awesome. Cause I just was coming from a place like everybody's different and, um, maybe what works for me doesn't work for everybody, you know, it doesn't work for anybody else. And, um, which is true. And you know, a lot of everybody's different. Like some people can't do it that way. They can't water load. Um, maybe they have like kidney issues or something like who knows. But, um, anyway, so she did it and she did weigh and she loved it. So my point is after that, she started referring me to people and then those people referred me to people. And next thing you know, I'm like working with all these people based off of referrals and I had to figure out how to charge and, um, the biggest thing I learned was to charge more upfront because with diet coaching, with coaching in general, uh, you put in the most work upfront. So yeah, you might have a service that's like ongoing and you check in with your clients, but really the bulk of the work for you is going to be on the front end. And I also believe that it helps the client give buy-in to the process. So if they're willing to spend 
Uh, I would say at least charge $250 up front, maybe even more, depending on how much you offer, like how much your service, how comprehensive your services are um, and kind of what clientele you're going after. Obviously, the higher amount you charge, um, the richer people you're, you know, the, the higher ticket items you're going after, the more um, high end the experience should be for the end user. But um, people should pay up front because they're going to get the most out of you in that initial consultation because you're going to, or in that first month, because you're going to be revealing all of your secrets, your secret sauce, how things are done, um, really giving them a plan. And if they're not paying up front for most of it, they could, let's say you only charging like hundred bucks a month or something. And it's, you know, hundred bucks a month for my services, period, end of story. And you're not paying that up front like larger ticket up front, then they could just sign up the first month, get the diet plan or get the plan and everything that you promised and then peace out, do it on their own for whatever amount of time. Um, so I think the best bet is, and, and people that are more serious about actually changing will pay more money. And the more money they pay, the more likely they are to do it. So there's certain people where $250 is like, pfft, that's not enough to make me change. Like, cause they maybe make a million dollars a year. Like that's not enough incentive. But if you charge them five grand, like they would be more likely to follow through on the process if they bought into it. So just to remember that there's different people with different mindsets and different amounts of money mean different things to different people. And um, so I think building your business where, yeah, you have the residual, I would pay a month, I would charge a monthly fee, but I always had like a setup fee or I forget what I called it, like a initial, initial payment. Um, and of course, my goal was not to have clients forever. My goal was to teach them how to manage their diet and manage their exercise and build a healthy mindset around their food. And obviously, if you produce a good product and you fulfill your promise to the people you work with, they are more likely to refer you to your friend. And if they have a transformation, you better believe their friends are asking what the hell they did. So uh, you definitely get friends and family that are like, uh, what did Susie just do? Like whatever happened with her, like that's what I want, you know? So um, hopefully you find that useful. If you have any other questions, if there's any other coaches out there that, you know, want to know more about kind of how I structured this and what I did or like my sales process around uh, any of that. I'm not like pitching you on like, I'm not selling you anything. Um, I would just be curious to know if like any, you know, I'm just happy to help anybody. Uh, my business now, like I said, is insurance and that's where I make my money now. So I'm not charging in any of these other areas. So I'm just here to try to help other people and like build some sort of, um, support network for myself and other people and for me and I don't know whatever comes out of it um so yeah I'm not here to sell anything I, I my questions around that and like offering to help is sincere like if you are a coach and you want to chat about how to kind of set up your business or if you have some ideas and like want to bounce it off of me I'm more than happy to schedule a call with you and like chit chat about that I love um I love helping other people and and um I don't know what else to say, you know? Like, if you don't wanna take me up on my offer to help you, that's fine too. So uh, hopefully you got something out of the video. And uh, next up, uh, pretty much I've got the uh, why I like being married, <laughs> my married video, uh, and funny, funny stories about me and my husband and like how we've grown. Uh, I've got a video about me and my kids and like how my kids have helped me become a better business owner and a better leader and a better person and then i have other videos coming up about learning and versus playing and are they one and the same or can you do both at the same time and just some questions that i've developed around those ideas um i also have i believe more insurancey business stuff I don't know. I think I maybe already did that. This is like failures, like my biggest failures in life and what I learned from them. I think I already did that one. And 
why I do what I do. So basically reviewing how people get hosed in insurance and what the experience that I hear from clients that are moving away from their broker and asking me to help them. What does that look like and why are they moving? Um, and what their biggest pain points are. So anyway, thank you for hanging out until the end. Please like the video and I will see you next time.